Okay guys, let's take a look at this set. The images in the Halloween slimline set are fan fantastic. Now, this largest image is about five and a quarter inches tall, so it's great for slimlines or for mini slimlines. This is a new die set made also for slimlines. It's the first and only one that Art Impressions has and it includes that flag. There are six different layers here you can work with and it's fantastic. I'm so happy that we have this now in the store. I'm also going to use a new web die set that came out last week and this is several very fine and delicate web die cuts that it will uh, create for you. It has the two spiders plus the um, jack-o-lantern but then you have all these cool webs and they're all different sizes and shapes so they'll fit on pretty much anything that you're looking for. So we've got corners, we've got long, tall, skinny ones, we've got big round ones and everything in between. So it's really a fun set and I'm going to be definitely using some of these webs in my car today. Now here I am going to create a um, mask for my moon. So I just cut that out using a circle double stitch die. I've pre-cut a panel out of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. I'm going to use this and blend on it. And to start with, this card is cut about seven and three quarters by two and three quarters. And as you can see, I'm laying out my characters, which I colored with Copic markers. And this is the mask for my moon. And I'm just sort of figuring out where I'm going to place that mask. So I'm going to remove all the figures now, as well as that die. Now I chose not to use any Tombow glue to hold down this mask. It's really more or less acting like a stencil at this point. Um, it probably would have worked a little better if I had, and you're going to see how it's going to try to move around on me. But the truth of the matter is, is once I get this yellow color down, I'm going to be putting that mask that I made with the two Tombow two-way glue behind it on top of this yellow area that I've created. And anything that's a little bit beyond the edge, like which may happen here when I'm um, putting down this color with this paper or stencil, is going to get covered up with darker ink that I'm going to use on the background. So the whole point of the mask that I made of the round one with the Tombow two-way glue is that it's going to cover up this nice yellow color while I am putting down the really dark color all around it. So it protects it. So again, if I get ink outside of that circle, like I did here in the upper right hand corner, or that circle isn't 100% perfect, it's not going to particularly matter a whole lot since I'm going to go over it again. Well, I maybe killed that whole topic by talking about it too much. I'm sorry, but it's hard to explain. I'm trying to be as clear as I can so you can understand what's going on and what my thought process was as I was doing it. Okay, well moving on, I've started now with the ink blending on the background of this panel. So I started with uh, Forest Moss, and that's a really deep, dark, brownish green color, and it's great for suggesting ground. The next color I'm using is Black Soot, and that's going to start kind of a skyline. So it's a demarcation between the ground and the sky. Um, and then I'm coming in with Cracked Sapphire, which is a really dark blue ink color. So that goes nicely against the black. It's not too bluish, not too blackish. It's just a nice blending color to go together with that black soot. And as I put in each of these layers, I'm going to go back with the previous color and sort of work on where the two meet to soften the edges a bit. So this next color is Blueprint Sketch. And as you can see now, I'm going back with the um, Chip Sapphire to soften up the line. Now that I'm getting pretty close to the moon, I'm going to put on the mask that I made first, which is that die cut paper. It's really just typing paper that I put again that Tombow two-way glue on. So now this is not going to move around on me as I go over it and apply different colors. And so at this point, I'm applying the Wilted Violet color. Then I'm going to go in with the Blueprint Sketch and soften the line. And once that's done, I'm going to go back to the Chip Sapphire. And that's going to be kind of in the middle of the moon there on each side. 
And then the next color I will use is again the blueprint sketch after that. And I would really kind of recommend instead of waiting until getting close to that moon, you might want to put on your mask right away because it would have been really easy for me to get some ink onto that yellow with my fingers or something like that. If that had happened or if it happens to you, you can bring back your stencil, if you will, and reapply the yellow ink again. Um, it may not completely cover it up, but it will soften any kind of marks you might get there. I'm bringing in some water now. I'm going to spray it pretty heavily because I want a good bit of this to come up and I'll blot it with a paper towel. Make sure it's a clean one. And um, I wanted to do this to create more of an idea of stars in the background or maybe even heavenly bodies like the Big Dipper in the background. Just kind of gives you some light mixed in with that dark. To add some shimmer and some additional white to the background, I'm going to spray on some Dilutions White Linen Spray. And you can see I'm going to be pretty liberal with it. And it gets a little bit heavier in certain areas, but that is just perfect for me. I'm fine with that. And that's going to give us a little bit of, again, more shimmer to it and light. Now peeling back the mask I had created, you could see a little bit of it seep through and that's because I added so much water I think. Um, so it was still a little damp at this point and I used a clean paper towel to soak up some of that. Now what's going to end up happening is I'm going to cover some of it up or at least tone it down with the spiced marmalade because the moon often has sort of an orangey tinge to it in places. So I'm just putting in a little bit of orange shadowing there, making sure I apply it in areas where the, um, where the seeping has occurred. And then I'm going to go over that again to soften everything up with more squeezed lemonade. Just things alone are not going to completely cover up my mistake here, but I am going to be applying several different characters and some webs. And you'll see that it worked out fine and the seepage was really not noticeable in the final card. I let that dry and while I was doing it, I cut out a new panel in orange using the slimline die. And this is the second largest die that I used in the set. And then on top of that, I took the panel that I was working on and cut that out of the third largest die so that I could stack these one on top of the other to create a mat. Next, I'm working on the actual card base. So this one is uh, going to be three and a half by eight and a half inches when folded. So the um, cardstock is originally cut at seven inches wide by eight and a half inches wide, scored at three and a half, and then folded over. And this creates what most would consider to be a standard size slim line. They can vary a little bit in size uh, from eight and a half by three and a half but generally it's pretty close to this. And this then fits really nicely as my final background to my matted panel. So I love the fact that we've got the orange going and the black and the yellow and all those pretty background colors. Next I'm going to start applying all the characters that I've colored and all the accessories. So this is a border of leaves that I've put down at the bottom. And I've left a little space there because I'm going to uh, stamp a sentiment below those leaves. Next, I'm going to start applying some of those fabulous webs that I had cut out of black glitter cardstock. And I wanted one of these to go across the moon. And you can see now that the splotches are starting to kind of disappear, the seepage, <laughs> if you will, because your eye is already looking at everything else and not seeing that moon. Next, I've got the adorable little bat hanging from a branch with his friend, the spider. I love that particular image. I think I want to do a card just centering on that bat. He's so cute. I'm going to take one of the spiders that was cut out using the uh, web die set and put that down. And then here is the little witch's hat that comes as a separate image. I thought it'd be cute on that owl. I did consider putting it on either the fox or the raccoon, but in the end, I just put it on the owl. He's the wise old owl, I guess. <laughs> 
So now my finished image here, I'm applying so that it's sitting on top of the leaves. I've got double-sided foam tape securing it to my card base. And then I'm going to start adding a few more webs. So this is another one of those long, narrow, well, more narrow style webs. And I'm going to just slip it underneath the raccoon there. So it kind of looks like it's attached to something behind him even though we can't see what it is. We'll hang that out there and I'm going to put two more on. The first one is going to go um, kind of behind a gourd there. And I found that when I turned or flipped the card over, I could get that in a little easier. I guess because I'm working on the right side, so it's a little easier when it's turned over. And then finally I've got a more round style web that I'm putting at the bottom, towards the bottom of that image. And I had to use that cute jack-o'-lantern that's in the stamp set. I'm going to set that on the ground next to the wagon. And I'm pretty much finished at this point with the uh, scene that I've set. And I'm so happy with it. It's so cute. Love these little animals and all the gourds. It's um, so much fun to color these. And if you're not sure how to color them, again, refer to the packaging because the packaging does a fantastic job of showing you what colors you might want to use and also some shading if you want to make it a little bit more three-dimensional too. For the sentiment, I need a long, narrow one. So I'm going to choose Trick or Treat, and this is from the Halloween Critter set. I will need to just ink this up and apply it straight onto the card. And as the last thing I'm doing before finishing, this is kind of a scary thing. <laughs> I should have done this a lot earlier before I put all the 3D items on because then I could have done it in my Misty. But we may do. And I was very careful. And the nice thing is when you have good quality stamps, the odds of getting a good first impression go way up. And it worked perfectly. So there's my finished card. I hope you like the shine and the glitter that appears from the webs in the background. It's super fun and I really enjoyed making this. Thank you so much for being here today. I so appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, provide a comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I've got a few more videos here that you might like to watch as well. Have a super day and I'll be back soon with a new video.